so now we know what pd is what uh, boundary conditions are so in the so now we we are starting a journey towards finding the solution to this pds okay an approximate solution to the pds okay so we know that we are looking for the solution in a vector space v which is which we call the trial space whose basis vectors are sizes and we can write this uh, trial space as a span of these basis vectors note that each of these basis functions basis vectors are of functions okay so you can you can remember this picture that we have discussed and vectors space v the trial space is the subspace subspace of the infinite dimensional space in which the actual solution lies since uh that we are actually solving for is not the exact solution note that uh is this uh this this uh, projection this yellow dotted part of the solution is what we want to solve for uh is not an exact solution so we can represent so the the, the if you put the value of uh in the pde this l operator represent a linear pde so if you put this you won't get zero okay so what we'll get we'll call this thing whatever we get out of the differential equation or the partial differential equation when you put the approximate solution uh as the residual okay when we use this approximate solution this approximate solution is nothing but linear combination of the sizes which which are actually the basis function of this trial space okay and cj's are the coefficients okay or the weights that we want to find out this is a weighted sum or a linear combination so how do we think of a residual okay the residual is some kind of error but not exactly the error okay I'll, i'll explain it using example in the next slide but just remember it it is not a not a value it is a function okay residual is a function what does it represent how does we quantify what a specific residual is because we can quantify errors this much error a specific scalar value is assigned to error but how can we quantify a residual when it is a function we'll see that later okay so in general the residual is a function of x and it is de- dependent upon the c1 c2 cn because uh, the uh contains these cjs and we are input we are putting this uh in our original differential equation partial differential equation and we are calculating the residual okay now the our only target is to find out these coefficients c1 c2 cn so so that this residual is minimized what does we mean by minimizing a residual we'll see but we want to minimize this error function a kind of error function in some sense okay now let's let's uh, try to picture this thing now this is the actual solution okay and this is a trial solution space in which we are searching our solution this is this this a uh, picture is similar to what we have discussed but uh, we are presenting it in a different form to explain few things okay so this is the actual solution these are the basis functions for example there are just two basis functions for this trial solution space and the projection of this actual solution is this okay this is the trial solution or a uh that we are looking for and this difference of these two vectors is the error okay so there is no geometrical picture as such in this functional space but we are using our intuition from the geometric space or the geometric vectors into this functional space okay so we know that it lies in some infinite dimensional space the actual solution and we know what this text says okay we can see that this error is orthogonal to this complete trial space is it it okay it's just a normal this is normal to everything in this 
every vector in this trial solution space no matter which vector you draw anywhere you draw any vector in this space this error will be orthogonal okay so to ensure that we have the minimum error okay otherwise we could have this solution also another solution say this solution in that case the error wouldn't be orthogonal okay so to get the best solution we want the error to be orthogonal to the trial solution space okay so the trial solution space is nothing but the span of these basis functions i1 and psi2 so if we could prove if this error is orthogonal to the just the basis functions okay so one statement is we want error to be orthogonal to the complete space and another, another statement is the error should be orthogonal to all the basis function okay so these both of these two statements are actually saying the same thing because each vector in this trial solution space is actually a linear combination of these two basis functions psi1 and psi2 so if you prove that this error is orthogonal to psi1 and psi2 then you actually are proving that the error is orthogonal to any vector in this trial solution space okay so how do we check orthogonality for a function using inner products okay that we'll see in the next slide okay so this another top view this this top view of everything so this are psi1 and psi2 and this are this is what we want to find out the c1 and c2 okay how much psi1 we want to use how much psi2 we want to use these are the c1 and c2 that one that we want to find out okay this is this red arrow is the trial solution or the projected solution and this is made up of psi1 times uh, c1 times psi1 and c2 times psi2 so our only target right now is to find out c1 and c2 and we have one condition we have established one condition which will give us this projection is so that with this condition is error should be orthogonal to the basis functions of the trial space okay so this particular idea of projection whatever we discuss is used in what is called a galerkin's method to find out the cjs okay which which are the only unknowns so what is the difference between an error and a residual okay the actual solution is u the trial solution is uh in the trial space the error is defined as simply the actual solution minus the approximate solution okay at any point now here error is also function but you can calculate the maximum error or the rms error and so on so this is how we directly calculate the error but the problem is we don't know u beforehand because that's what we want to find out using solving this pd so what we do is we calculate the residual which is nothing but error in satisfying differential equation okay this is not something the error on the actual solution this is the error in satisfying the differential equation by how much amount you are not able to satisfy the differential equation okay how how off you are from the from a function that satisfies the differential equation okay we are not directly comparing it with the actual solution okay so this is the residual yeah it's it the residual tells us by how much the how much amount the pd is not satisfied at a given point it won't give us any information about the error in the solution okay although uh, if you reduce the residual error will also reduce but directly there are though not one to one connection between them okay so even pd is satisfied at a particular point that is the residual is zero at that point it is possible the solution not not exact at that point we'll see in the several we'll see this in the several examples that we are going to discuss okay however if residual is zero throughout the domain okay it's a zero function itself it's zero throughout the domain then we can conclude that the trial solution that we are uh, that we were we were constructing is actually the exact solution okay, you got lucky that the trial solution uh, is the exact solution 
just just for just for a feel consider this the simple equation x cubed equals to 8 we know that the solution for this is 2 okay let's write this is in this form fx this is equivalent to writing it in this form l of u okay so we write it what we want to find out is x okay so we can write about equation as fx is equal to 0 which is similar to l u is equal to 0 and the residual can be defined as r is equal to f of x of h this x h is now our approximate solution or the trial solution so let the trial solution be x h is equal to 1 so the residual for this trial solution would be r is equal to f of 1 okay r at 1 which is minus 7 okay this is the residual now if you want to calculate the error okay so the actual solution is 2 the trial solution is what 1 so error is 1 but the residual is minus 7 okay so the residual in some sense is telling us uh, the error in in the in this expression uh, uh, error in satisfying this okay we are not comparing with x equals to 2 but we are looking from some different perspective of the, the perspective of the equation perspective of the satisfaction of the equation this similar to the perspective of satisfaction of this equation for a for a function okay so this is basically a difference between error and residual now what's Galkin method is we discussed previously that this, that projection that we took that the error should be orthogonal to the trial space is the condition that we are going to use to cal calculate the CJs so that's what we do in the Galkin's method but there is a slight change okay that is the change is the rest the not the error but the residual should, should be orthogonal to the trial solution because that's what we can calculate we can't calculate the error and residual is in some sense it tells us how we how how off are we from the actual solution so we we will impose the residual should be orthogonal to the trial solution similar to what similar to the error okay similar to the orthogonality of error we we demand that the residual should be orthogonal to the trial solution and this orthogonality will be checked by the inner product and we define the inner product in this particular space is something like this if we, we represent some uh, two things separated by comma and closed in a bracket curly uh, circle several brackets when we when we, we, we define it something like this as an integral of f of x into g of x over the domain so in Galerkin method what we want is the inner product of r the residual and any v inside trial space v this is any v in v okay should be zero that's the same thing that we discussed the residual should be orthogonal to any vector in that vector space the trial space okay or the equivalently we can say that the r should be orthogonal to every basis function in that vector space because if psi g psi i's are the basis functions that makes up that spans that vector space v then we can equivalently say that the residual should be orthogonal to each of the basis function okay so this is actually a one this is one statement single statement because it's very difficult to deal with all the basis vector right because you can't just simply check infinite number of bases, uh, in, infinite number of uh, these uh, vectors v. Okay, so what we do, we, we just simply ch check the orthogonality with the basis functions. So this is, these are n number of equations. This is not one equation. So r orthogonal to psi 1, then psi 2, then psi 3. These are n sets of equations. This is just one statement. Okay. So... Uh, the method of weighted residuals is uh, basically uh, a generalized form of Galerkis method in which uh, we demand R to be orthogonal to some space W but not space V in which you are looking for a solution. Okay, so, uh, so the Galerkis method is nothing but a special case of weighted residual method where W is equals to V okay yeah 
so we won't be discussing all other kind of weighted residual methods like collocation methods and several other methods but we'll simply focus on the gherkin's method because that's what we'll will be going to use to solve the finite element uh, to develop the finite element model okay so there and uh, there is another method called the least square method uh we'll we are going to prove that this is also a special case of the weighted residual method okay in this method we aim to find out the cjs by minimizing the square norm of the residual okay this we define a square norm is something like this this is inner product with itself okay so using the definition of the inner product that we have defined earlier so it will be r into r dx which is r square dx and uh, we know that residual is nothing but uh, the pd evaluated by substituting uh this is our uh putting it into l we have calculated the r okay and we we evaluate this integral now so what we want is to minimize this thing with respect to the coefficients we want to find out the coefficients that minimize this r norm so we take partial derivative of r square with respect to these indi individual cis and we uh, get a uh, e one equation for each of this operation okay for c1 c2 for c3 we get uh, n equations and we uh, arrange them into uh, a set of matrix like ax is equals to b or ac is equals to b that kind of matrix and we solve that matrix to find the c's okay this are set of i equations okay now we can take the derivative inside because that's a linear operator so 2r Let R be L C I. Okay, we can take this inside, and this implies that if you remember the inner product definition, this is nothing but the inner product of the two doesn't make any sense. So the inner product of R with its partial derivative with respect to a, a specific C. Okay, so this is equivalent to weighted residual method. R common W is equal to zero, where W I is R this. We will we will see a few example of solving or okay, evaluating CJs using least square method, but we won't be differentiating this. We'll simply be plot plotting the R square norm and try to see where it gets minimum. And that's it for this video. We'll see the examples of finding CJs using the Gerhardt's method and least square method in the next video, and try to understand. uh the process uh better and try to understand how the things vary with choosing different bases what are residual is what error is things will become clearer as we uh, see example in the next video thank you